because he was the father's most favored son. He was rejected by his own. He was sold for pieces of silver. He was put down in that place of the condemned. And two were there with him. Remember, one was cursed to death. The other was given life, just like the two on the cross with Jesus. And then later he was raised up out of that place of the condemned. He was brought before the throne. He was the only one found worthy to reveal God's future plan, right? The famine, the harvest, and then the famine. And at that moment, he who sat on the throne glorified him and exalted him and had all bowed the knee to him, except for he who sat on the throne. And then he gave him a Gentile bride, right? He gave him a Gentile bride, and then he collected a great harvest. We know in Romans chapter 11, verse 25, it says that when that full number of Gentiles has come in, in other words, has come into Christ, then all of Israel will be saved. In other words, when that last piece of grain was harvested, like harvested and brought in during that great harvest, that seven years of great harvest, then what happens? This Gentile bride was already with him. Then a great time of trouble comes, seven-year time of great trouble, like Jacob's trouble, and that's when he saves all of Israel in fulfillment of those dreams where they all bow down to him, but they hated him back then, but then they loved him now, and they were grateful that he was showing them great mercy and grace and chesed, right, if you're in Israel, which means loving kindness and tender mercies. Wow, <laughs> Joseph was a lot like Jesus, my friend. And I wrote a book on it. You could actually get this on Amazon if you wish. It's a pretty good-sized book, and it goes into great detail about how Yosef or Joseph was a lot like Yeshua or Jesus. So good, you guys. I'm glad you're here. I love you. And we're going to get into uh, episode two now of this series. And I promise you, it will bless you greatly, my friend. All right. Right after this video, you're going to see it. Here we go. Okay, here we are. This is a timeline, you guys. I like to do this. Um, it, it helps you know where you're at in the Bible. A lot of times uh, churches and Sunday schools don't do this, but it's very important. So in the beginning, God. In the end, God. We know that's what the Bible says. In Genesis, it says in the beginning, he is the beginning, right? And then there was Adam and Eve, creation, and Adam and Eve. And then later there was the flood. Then there was Abraham, Isaac, or Yitzhak, uh, if you're in in Israel, uh, Jacob or Yaakov, right? That's how you'd pronounce it in Hebrew. And then Yosef in Hebrew or Joseph. And he was right around 2,000 years before Christ. And he was a huge picture of Jesus Christ. Then right at 0 AD, we know Jesus was born. That means Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. 32 AD, he was 33 years old. He died on the cross. And then he was raised from the dead. And then... He is alive and well at the right hand of the throne, just like Joseph being at the right hand of the throne as well. There's that picture, right? And then there's this area right here for the last almost 2,000 years, which we call the church age, where he primarily has, Jesus has a Gentile bride. Now, that's about to change because when that last number of Gentiles has come to Christ, it says that all of Israel will be saved. And that day is yet future, you guys. So, so good, right? So here's another close-up. Um, you could see Adam and Eve, the flood, Abraham, Yitzhak, uh, Yaakov, and Yosef. And then later there's Moshe, Moses, right? And Yeshua, Joshua, another picture and a type of Jesus Christ. But this story does take place right around 2,000 years before the birth of Christ. So he sent him away from Hebron. Remember, Hebron means fellowship or alliance it, he sent him out, the father did, sent him out to the valley uh, from Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Shechem, right? That's where his brothers got in trouble before. So Hebron, here it is. It means the seat of association, friendship, or fellowship. We know that Jesus was with the father in perfect fellowship, the Bible tells us. And then God the father sent him down to be born as a little tiny baby, from the Virgin Mary or Miriam. He was very Jewish. He lived a, a perfect life. 
And then later he healed. He had a three and a half year ministry where he healed and he loved people and he forgave people and he taught people with authority. And then he died on that cross for you and me for, to deal with our sin once and for all. And then three days later, he was raised from the dead and he's alive and well today, my friend. So that's a little, uh, just a quick summary of, of Jesus's life. When he left fellowship though, Hebron, the valley of uh, from the seat of association or friendship with the Father. So that's what we're seeing. Let's go back into the presentation. So here we are in Genesis chapter 37 in this second episode. And the Brishit, of, uh, this is the Hebrew book of Genesis. And then we're using the complete Jewish Bible, uh, Bible. And that's where we're getting the scripture. It's taken from the complete Jewish Bible, copyright 1998, 2016 by David H. Stern, used by permission, all rights reserved worldwide. So here we go. Verse 15 of chapter 37. There was a, there, he, he found a man uh, where he found a man wandering around in the countryside. The man asked him, what are you looking for? So he's asking Yosef, you know, what are you looking for right now? And here Joseph is looking around. He's trying to find his brothers. The man asks him, hey, what are you looking for, kid? <laughs> he's 17 years old, as you remember. And he says, I'm looking for my brothers, he answered. Tell me, please, where they are pastoring the sheep the father's flock, right? The man said, they've left here because I heard them say, let's go to Dotan. Yosef went after his brothers and found them in Dotan. Now, what does Dotan mean? Dothan or Dothan means two wells or laws and customs. Now, what did Jesus find people doing when he arrived, the, the religious leaders especially, who were the shepherds of the father's flock, he found them in the laws and customs. And they were drawing from two wells. They were trying to be good in religion, but they were also doing a lot of evil. They were hypocrites. And so here they are bringing people to laws and customs. It shows us a picture of what's going on in Joseph's story. Amazing stuff, you guys. So here we go back and let's look at that again. Dothan, there's the Hebrew there. And then verse 18. They spotted him. So his brothers see him from far away. They spotted him in the distance. And before he had arrived where they were, they had already plotted to kill him or to murder him. What was going on with Jesus? The same thing. Those shepherds of the father's flock, the religious leaders, those Sadducees and Pharisees, they were plotting, not all of them, just some of them, they were plotting to murder Jesus, to kill him. They wanted him dead. Just like Joseph's story here, you guys. And this is the time, this is the picture of the cross. They stripped him of his tunic, right? And this was a dark, dark moment, you guys. Just like the cross, when there was darkness on the cross, he was stripped of his tunic there. And they gambled, they threw lots for his clothing, just in fulfillment of Psalm 22. Oh my, this was an amazing thing that we see in the in the book of Genesis, in Joseph's story. It was the picture of Yeshua, Yeshua Mashiach. Amazing, amazing stuff, right, you guys? So, hey, I can't wait to get into episode three with you. You don't want to miss it, you guys. And also, you want to check out this playlist over here. This one right here, this, this is the one where we go through the Old Testament Okay, Jesus found in the Old Testament books in, in a bunch of different places. And you might want to check that out, guys. So, hey, click on that. Check it out. You're going to be blessed, I promise you. And I'll see you guys next time in episode three. All right.